Now, I feel like there are two dominant types of designer handbag collection aesthetics that we see here on YouTube. On one hand, we see collections that scream quiet luxury through and through, right? Every bag is in a neutral, like a black, a tan, or cream. And we're talking bare logos. You know the look I'm talking about, right? This type of collection just exudes class and order and structure and elegance. And on the other hand, we have collections that, no offense at all intended, um, exude the exact opposite. Disorder, chaos, and for sure though, these collections are also fun and playful and exciting and just honestly youthful. They feature color and unique shapes and textures and ornamental designs and prints. And with that also comes unapologetically loud logos. I guess what's funny is that while my personal collection reflects more of the first minimal aesthetic, hands down, I 100% enjoy watching the second maximal aesthetic more. If two collection videos dropped at the same time, I'm for sure clicking on the second type first. And that's because those genuinely put a smile on my face. Like, I see you. I see how much joy your collection brings you. And it's this wild, chaotic, laugh out loud type joy, and it's contagious. So maybe I'm not as immune to FOMO and the influence of social media as I would like to think because when I watch those collections, it makes me want to be more adventurous and playful too. So in the spirit of exploring my wild side, I want to share with you some bags that are totally unlike anything I currently have, but I am seriously debating to add because I low-key have this desire to start a separate statement bag collection in like a separate part of my house, kind of like Monica and friends with her secret junk closet. So if you'd like to see what my curated collection of statement bags would look like, then please keep watching. But before we start, welcome to A Briefcase of Luxury, a place where we love to chat about all things related to life learning and luxury. And while I have no intentions of quitting my day job as a business professor, your support really does mean the world to me. And I would love to grow this channel so we can all continue on our journey towards more mindful consumption. So thank you so much to those of you who have subscribed, liked, commented, or shared my videos. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, I hope you'd consider doing so, especially if like me, you have a teensy obsession when it comes to a good handbag. Now, I'm not going to go in any particular order, but we will group these bags by shape, texture, print, that sort of thing. And what we'll do is we'll put together a hypothetically curated statement bag collection and see whether or not it all comes together as a collective. So let's get started. Let's kick things off with statement shapes. Currently, all I have are your basics, your trapezoids, your rectangular looking shapes, your bucket shapes. Heck, I don't I think I even have a round shape, which has become fairly commonplace nowadays. Like the most unusual shapes I have would probably be my um, Bottega double knot bag in my Mansur Gabrielle cloud clutch. And even then, it's not so much that they are statement shapes, but really they're just more shapeless instead. Um, so I feel like now would actually be a great time to add something like that since so many fashion houses are dipping their little designer toes in these waters. However, I refuse to pay Chanel money for something like their heart or star shaped bag, which by the way, are the shapes that we will mostly be referring to here. I will, however, pay coach money and what do you know, coach is already a haunt to people like me. They know there's a market of handbag lovers that are just unwilling to pay four or five or $6,000 for a trendy shaped bag. Like I'm not paying that much money for cute, you know, but on that note, did you know Dior has a star bag in their kids section now that's $2,200, which is well under half the price of Chanel's star bag. So really a bargain by designer standards, right? Now on a separate note, for my viewers out there with kids, would you ever buy a $2,000 designer handbag for your child? What about a star-shaped designer bag? Let me know down in the comments below, I'm curious. Now for me, in terms of buying that for myself, absolutely not. Coach money is the stretch as is for a bag like that. Now, while for virtually any other item, I would pick something star-shaped over heart-shaped, I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves, star-shaped bags just don't work. I mean, what funky shaped essential items are you packing, like ninja stars? So while those are out, I'm not gonna lie, a heart-shaped bag, I get that. Um, but first and foremost, I think they can look juvenile, especially on someone like me. I am in my 30s, I'm surrounded by college students. The last thing I need them to think is that their professor is going through a midlife crisis, running around 
around town with the sparkly heart shaped bag. So if I were to get one, I would need it to be just even remotely mature or at least attempt to look more mature, you know? So I think the coach version in the quilted leather in black, I think that could work. I also came across this cognac one with top handles made of, I think they call it a regenerative leather, which I honestly need to look more into. But I still think the uh, quilted leather version has a better design element that more organically de-emphasizes the heart shape and makes it look less juvenile, if that makes sense. But the cutest and best thing about both of these bags, their prices top out at $350. Okay, I lied. There's one other shape I would consider. I would like something that is a bag, but looks like something else. Does that make sense? Like, well, I would never be that bold to add the J.W. Anderson Pigeon Clutch or the Fendi Baguette Baguette. <laughs> I love seeing them in other people's collection, but for me, realistically, I would love to toy around with a book-shaped bag. I know this really isn't that out there, but I came across this little Chanel book card holder on Fashion File, and I don't know why, it just makes me happy. It's stupidly priced though at just shy of $3,000. Now the other one that I think is slightly better priced uh, on the pre-loved market is the Prada Kahir bag, especially the one with the astrology design. Like that bag to me would be like killing two birds with one stone. Book shaped, star design, done deal. So there we have it, my statement shaped bags. Next, let's do textures. The majority of my bags are again your usual suspects. We got leather, coated can, this. I have a couple of fabric and nylon bags and I have one tweed bag which isn't even a designer bag. It's my Karl Lagerfeld Aginess flat bag that I picked up for about $70 last year. Um, just because I was toying with the idea of a Chanel tweed classic flap, I clearly never added one to my collection so I guess you can say that bag convinced me it's not something I need. So while I don't have the itch to add tweed anymore, um, or exotics, I'll get to that in a separate video, but the textures that I would consider is something metallic, and there are two bags that I've been tracking on the pre lift market. The first is the Chanel Multicolor Reissue in the Metallic Goat Skin. I would have zero clue how to style the dang thing, but my gosh, I could stare at it for hours. And the other is a Metallic Mini Lady Dior. Again, if I do ever buy these, they would purely be ornamental just because I don't know how to wear them. Next up, let's do some ornamental designs. I for sure don't have a single bag that has any outstanding ornamental feature, but there are two bags that to me fit this bill. We'll start with the more ostentatious one, and that would be some sort of Alexander McQueen knuckle clutch. I wouldn't even know where to start. All of the ones that I've seen are just downright fabulous, and a little dangerous or violent looking, which makes them even more fun, right? And even more so than the last two bags, I cannot imagine a single occasion where I would ever need a brass knuckle clutch. So this again would be a purely fantasy buy. In fact, I'm worried I wouldn't even be able to bring it to certain events, you know, like let alone travel with it on a plane. Now the other more toned down ornamental design is a Fendi Peekaboo Monster. Oh my goodness, don't get me started on how stinking cute those are. Are, especially when you have your bag properly trained to do like a true peekaboo moment with the monster eyes. So of all the bags on my list, I can see this actually being the most practical, usable bag. Like this would make for such a fun work tote to take to teach, you know, and will probably earn me less eye rolls than a sparkly heart shaped bag from my, from my students. Um, and so there we have my statement ornamental bag picks. All right, up next, let's talk graphic elements. I feel like this is where it's at for me. This is where my hypothetical statement bag collection would excel at. Um, currently, besides from just a handful of monogram pieces, none of my bags really have any graphic elements to them at all. Besides my Trois de Jouy mini Dior book tote, that is. I, I forgot about her because I should be completely transparent. This has yet to leave my house. I bought her right when we were transitioning from fall to winter, so I'm I'm making a promise to myself that as soon as we even get a hint of warmer weather, she's going to be first up to bat. But you can say because of her, I now feel like I can justify buying pretty bags to use as art at home, which is terrible, I know. But let's go from least to most graphic of my statement bag picks. Um, first off is the Chanel ombre top handle in like the green blue color mix. I know absolutely nothing about Chanel collections, so I cannot even tell you when this is from. All I know is that I saw it online one day 
and I've been in love with her ever since. Um, and along those lines, I also came across this men's Louis Vuitton Mini XS Keep Ball on Fashion File, and it has this beautiful watercolor design detail, but again, how the heck do you style something like that? Like, please, seriously, give me suggestions in the comments. Like, this bag is heavily discounted at the moment, and my guess is it's not going to be available for much longer. Now, sticking with Louis Vuitton, I've mentioned the men's Nebula Keep All 25 in the past, and yes, if money wasn't an issue, um, and neither was having any sort of common sense, I 100% would buy this bag. Now, while I actually have two more Louis left on the list, we are going in order from least to most graphic, and those definitely top the list in terms of being completely out there. So yes, let's shift over to Dior. First, there are um, two bag styles in particular. This first one is easy. Just give me all the trois de jouis. Everything trois de jouis. Yes, the print is busy. It's got a lot going on, but there's something just so classic about it. It doesn't really feel gaudy to me, at least. Even um, like their Zodiac collection, that to me is so beautiful and still feels classy, you know? And I really wish they would bring this one back and make it in the new mini book style with the shoulder strap. Now the next one is quite the opposite of class from Dior and it is the pixelated Zodiac collection. Again, this was from a couple of years ago. Fashion File had one at the end of 2023 in the yellow micro size and I thought it was just the cutest thing ever. And for that bag, I can actually see um, it looking so cute, dressed down with a pair of jeans and hoodie, you know? Um, then again, it also looks like something you would find at like a Hot Topic. Are those even still a thing? Okay, let's finish strong with Louis Vuitton, and I'll just talk about them both at the same time. Second to last will be the Petite Mal in the limited Symphony Edition. And finally, we have the Jeff Koons Master Collection, and more specifically, the version featuring Ruben's Tiger Hunt. I don't want to get into too much of the why besides the fact that um, they're awesome. And let's just say these designs, these patterns hold intrinsic sentimental value to me in terms of where I've been, what I've done, and just who I am today. Um, which how awesome is it to have those elements of your personality and history and story kind of wrapped up in a bag, you know? So for those reasons, like these two would be particularly special and I would have more motivation to add these over the other ones because they are more than just unique, pretty statement bags. So now that we've assembled my dream team of statement bags, let's have a look-see, shall we? What do you guys think? How well did I do for someone who naturally has more of a neurotic, uptight, type A bag collection? I think it's not too shabby. Now the million dollar question is, would I actually use these bags if I bought them or would they again just be for stroking my ego um, locked away in the secret closet for me to stare at at home? I honestly don't know, but does it matter? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll catch up with you next time.